Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy. In this quick one, I will show you how to implement the site menu with Ionic 4. And we had this video before, but a few things actually changed. It got a lot easier, so I um, thought it would be a good idea to update the video. So here we go. I've created the blank new uh, app like this, Ionic Start Academy menu based on the blank template. And we're going to use Angular for this uh, video like always. So then we can generate some pages and I would like to have them in the pages folder. Um, so we are a little bit more structure in our application. So therefore we can get rid of the uh, home folder and I don't want to be asked again. And then we can create first of all the menu pages, which will um, host the general template for the menu. So defining the site menu and the entries. And then we got the first page and the second page. So, oops. So we can actually display uh, something within our menu. And the original version also had a module file, but we will not use this. And in here we can get basically get rid of um, everything. And the entry point of our app will be the actual menu module. And in here the magic happens. Um, which is actually not so much magic at all anymore. So let me bring up Ionic Surf in the background to see our app already. And then in here we see we got the empty path, um, which we could change to, let's say, menu. And then we simply define the children for our menu. And those will be these two great um, entries. I'd really love to have a function that splits up these things a bit. And because I recorded this video um, almost right after the tabs video, I know that the path to our file is now wrong because we came from uh, this level and we are now down one level. So we just have to go up one level and then the first and the second page are right next to our menu module. All right, so now uh, we got those two um, paths. We got the menu in place, which is displayed, but not really a menu yet. And we also should implement a little redirect in here. Um, I think we can go to, oops, uh, let's say for the path empty, which is the path we are on in the beginning we will redirect to slash menu slash first. So this means the router will look up the first part, which resolves to this component. And then it will look up the first inside the children array, which is this, and then loads our first page module. Okay, so sounds pretty easy so far. So let's create the actual menu. And this is now a bit more interesting, um, but uh, maybe maybe we even take one step back and already create the um, array of pages that we want to display in our menu. So we could do this in the menu uh, HTML as well with multiple buttons, but maybe you just like to have a little um, pages array which defines the information up front so you can easily update it in here. So let's say title and URL. For the first page, it would be menu slash first. And then for the second, of course, second page and menu second. Also, uh, we will keep track of the selected path. So um, this will help us to actually mark the active menu item uh, based on the path. And therefore, we would have to subscribe to the router events. So import the router from an angular router like this. And then directly in here, we say this dot router events subscribe because it's an observable. And then we should get back an event of the type router event. Actually, um, there are pretty or quite a lot of events. Um, if you lock this out and we will for now, just use this dot selected path equals event dot URL. So this will give us the currently selected URL 
uh, we can have a little check in our view if the selected path is equal to the URL of the item and then um, add some CSS. Let me bring it in for the active item uh, based on the ion primary color. So to the left side, we will have this eight pixel solid bar, hopefully. All right, um, the missing piece is still our actual menu page. And here we uh, could start with the ion menu, but actually it makes uh, a lot of sense to use ion split pane because the ion split pane can be just or simply around the ion menu and this will take care of for example if your app runs on the ipad it will automatically have the sidebar open that you know from many uh, applications so we will see the resize effect in the browser as well so in terms of the ion menu of course you could also uh, get rid of this um, totally optional so the ion menu consists of the actual menu definition and below the menu, we got an ion router outlet, uh, which needs an ID, let's say content, and also it needs to be the main uh, router outlet. So Ionic knows on the Angular router knows where to display the actual pages. So this is just the markup for the site menu that you pull in. And this is the area where the first or the second page or whatever page you got will be displayed. Okay, that's important to understand. And to make sure uh, the menu knows where to display the stuff, we need to connect it using the content ID and then content. So make sure that this is equal this. So if this is XXX, then this would have to be like this. All right, so now we can implement the menu. And in here, we uh, basically got everything that we uh, normally have as well so ion header ion toolbar ion title menu or we could leave this out that's completely optional and then we got ion content and for the ion content we will craft a simple list consisting of ion menu toggle items so these items will automatically toggle the menu uh, which is especially helpful if the app runs on a uh, mobile phone uh, because the space is small, so you always want to close the menu. Um, but we can also pass in auto hide false, um, which is helpful for bigger browsers. So we will see the difference in a second. And then, of course, for page of pages, that's the information that we defined up front right here. So therefore, we got um, ion item that we can craft. Uh, we can give it the title of the page. And now we just need to hook up uh, the router information of the page. And here we will use router link and we will surround it with the brackets, which tells Angular that this is a uh, object it needs to uh, get the value from. So therefore we use p.url and if we would use it like this, the router would actually look for this string. But that's, of course, not what we want to. So we put the brackets around it and then it will resolve to the actual variable. And we also uh, should set the router direction. In this case, root. If you um, make this like forward or back, the animation uh, when the page is displayed looks different and for a site menu I think root looks the best. And finally, this is uh, again more or less optional, um, setting the active item. So if the selected path is equal to p.url and maybe if you go down deeper you could also just check um, if the URL starts with this or whatever. So that's just a basic idea how we could implement it. So right now we should be able to see the menu, but we don't see it because we haven't implemented the menu button, but maybe, yeah. This is uh, how the uh, split pane works. So if the device is big enough, the menu will automatically be visible. And we see actually Things work pretty good. We got menu second, we got menu first, and those things work. 
Now we just need to make sure that those things work on small devices with a button and perhaps also how to programmatically uh, move around in our app. And therefore, let's go to our first page and first of all, implement the ion buttons with a slot start. So they're displayed at the left top hand or if you use right to left, I think it's uh, the other way around. But normally, um, it should be, or most of the time, or whatever, it's in the beginning. So um, this is the Ion Menu button, and this button will automatically be visible if there is a menu. So right now, we should be lucky and see the button. There we go. Uh, second page needs this one as well. Otherwise, we are lost on that page. Also, um, multiple ways to uh, open the menu or different elements. So we could use an ion menu toggle and inside we need to put an ion button. Actually, I think menu toggle is what we, uh, yeah, what we used right here. And uh, ion button, whatever, expand full and then toggle menu. So now we added this ion menu toggle to our first page. So let's move back to first. And this button now allows us to toggle the menu. And what now happens is once the screen gets bigger and the menu is already visible, the menu toggle button is not displayed anymore. So only if the menu is hidden, the menu toggle button is displayed but we can display them like we do in the side menu if we pass in uh, auto hide false so that's exactly why we use this if we remove this from our side menu i think um, those two elements of the side menu yep will be invisible because okay now they would be visible right but if the menu is already open they wouldn't be visible all right enough about auto hide and the toggle button let's do two more things first one i will copy the button first one for example uh, using a click event to uh, open the menu might be interesting in some cases and then let's also try to navigate to our um, second page by using a simple href or let's try a router link, better idea most of the time. So this should be menu second, go to second. All right, now we just need to put the open menu button here and to open the menu, that's an interesting function, okay. Uh, to open the menu, we need the menu controller, menu, controller from Ionic Angular and then simply menu controller um, let's use toggle so as you can see there are quite a lot of options for the menu controller that you could use um, to open to close to whatever but we will just use okay this is toggling the menu this is also totally opening the menu, so um, both the uh, toggle button and the click button works as expected. And now let's hope we move to the second page. Yeah, we're on the second page and everything uh, looks pretty good. So we can move around, we can go to our second page, back to the first page, see everything at once if we're on a website or uh, on a tablet device perhaps. And of course now the open menu is not working because the menu is already open. So that's uh, everything on how to create a site menu with Ionic 4. It has become a lot easier over uh, the different beta versions and the release candidates. So now with the stable version of Ionic 4, it is super easy uh, using the path and our Angular router. So if you enjoyed the video, also make sure to check out my ionicacademy.com if you want a great platform to learn Ionic as fast as possible with the help of the community. And I'd love to see you as a new subscriber. I'll see you inside the next video, hopefully.